So today is the day you've been preparing for all these years. You've spent hours, hundreds, maybe thousands of hours prepping your food storage, your weapons, your vehicles, a bug out location. You've practiced over and over. So you get out of the house and you head down the road. It's night and you're running you know, on low beams and there's not much traffic out. You can get from your house to your bug out location in three and a half hours exactly. And that's by taking back roads. You pull up near your bug out location, but not right up to it. Just in the event somebody's around. You pull off into the brush, just like you've always practiced. Your spouse hops out, pulls the security. You step out of the vehicle and you're walking up to where you are going to get a good eye on the approach to your retreat. But when you step out of the vehicle, you step into some metal and it cuts right into your foot. It, not into your foot, but all the way up into the, part, the lower part of your leg. This is not according to plan. So I've spent the last week being sick. I got a sinus infection, but during that time, I was thinking to myself, all right, we've got medical supplies. We've, maybe even we have some antibiotics, but do you have the actual training to go beyond stop the bleed? Stop the bleed, for those who don't know what it means, is to stop an emergency bleed that will prevent you from dying. Now, typically this is direct pressure and in the extreme case, this is going to be a tourniquet. Now what? Now that's where stop the bleed stops. We never talk about what happens after stop the bleed. In normal times, we would drive to the emergency room, you would go get checked out, and if possible, you may need minor surgery or major surgery for that matter depending on what the injury is. And you're always, no matter what, 100%, you're gonna be given antibiotics. So that's my question. How are you gonna get antibiotics? What, heck, how do you even know what antibiotics to give yourself? That is what I wanna talk about today, is antibiotics, how to get them, where to get them, and more importantly, what antibiotics are designed for what specific situations. Now I'm not a doctor. I have been an EMT. I'm no longer certified and everything I talk about today is information for you to go and gather. Now I'm not going to go over everything that you need to do. I'm going to point you in the direction where you can go get the medical training you need and the reference material that you're going to want to know when and if a disaster hits. Now it's not just about antibiotics. I want to talk about what's really going to happen if and when the shit hits the fan. Um, within the first three days, everything that, that you ever imagined that you could go and purchase is not going to be available. The stores are going to be gone. Even if you have cash, you probably won't be able to buy anything because nothing's going to be around. And if you're smart, you have already bugged out to a location. Now those that are bugging in, it's still not wise that you're going to want to go downtown or go to the, the market and pick up the things you need. First 24 hours, I would definitely do that. But after that, I'd want to lock myself in if I'm bugging in and, and then just go along with your plan from there. Now there's one book that I have used since 1982. It's called Where There Is No Doctor. And I'll put a link to it in the description. They cover scenarios, everything from foodborne illness, waterborne illness, um, bugs, mosquitoes, all of that kind of stuff, to gunshot stabs and stuff like that. It talks about exactly what you would need, the doses that you would need of antibiotics and the types of antibiotics that will help prevent uh, infections or to kill the infections. The most important thing you can do in your life from this point forward is get healthy and stay healthy. Be aware of where you walk, be aware of where you go, but things are going to happen. There's going to be car accidents. There's going to be cuts. Um, there's going to be things falling on you. I and mean, anything that happens in today's world is going to be amplified when the shit hits the fan. And so, um, so where can you find this information? I've left a link for where there is no doctor. I can buy it on Amazon. There's bookstores around the country that have them stocked. But 
it's an old school book, probably from the Peace Corps, and these doctors who've gone out and they talk about what they've done in these third world countries, which is basically what will happen in a grid down scenario. Other things that you can do is go out and get medical training. So go to an EMT course. You don't have to get certified as an EMT to take the course. There are many types of medical courses that you can take that you don't have to be certified in anything if you just want to go for the training. The most important part of this thing is how are you going to get your antibiotics? Well, there's a couple of companies out there. Uh, I've got a link to Jace Medical. Um, you can buy their antibiotics and you have a small kit that they will send you and you can use in the event of an emergency. But, you know, having 10 pills, 10 penicillins and, and 10 amoxicillins and, and a few things like that is not going to cut it. We're talking you need maybe hundreds of these pills stored away and then every so often they need to be uh, refilled and replenished. So where are you going to find stuff like that? Well, I don't know personally, but I've heard that you can go to Canada and get meds. You can go to Mexico and get these meds. Now, I will say I have gone to Mexico a couple of times and brought back prescriptions, but I've always had a, a valid prescription from a U.S. doctor. If you get a doctor in Mexico to give you a prescription, then um, there's a possibility if you start bringing hundreds and hundreds of these pills over that that's going to be invalidated. But if you have a U.S. doctor and you get a prescription, you go over and get maybe 50, maybe 100 at a time, and then do that three or four times. Um, maybe that's what you do. I'm not saying to go over and, and illegally bring drugs across the border. So don't um, pretend that that's what I'm saying. Uh, there's no winky winky. I'm saying you're going to have to find a way to get meds. Now, you can talk to your doctor. If you have a good relationship with your doctor, talk to your doctor and say, hey, I'm doing this and I'm preparing for this. And if you have a good enough relationship with your doctor, there's a possibility he might write you a prescription. Now, he's not going to send you 500 antibiotics, but if you ask him this time, could I get an extra prescription for 30, 40 pills, I mean, he might do that. Other ways, if you, if you get a prescription from your doctor, you can always mail away to these companies that sell prescriptions online. Just keep in mind that you do have to have a valid prescription. So none of this information that I'm sharing with you is a secret. And I'm not advocating for you to break the law, to go out and get a prescription pad and write prescriptions. Those days have come and gone. Every prescription that's written today in the United States is in a computer. So if you try to play the game and get prescriptions with an illegal script pad, you're probably gonna get arrested and go to jail. And that's, none of us want that. So, so there's ways to do it legally, and I urge you to do that. But most importantly, I urge you to get the training, read the books, and then always practice uh, the skills. So I'm going to get back to our series um, that's coming up. Um, I took a week off because I was laying in bed dying. I didn't die, but I felt like I was going to die. I'm still getting over it. And I'm glad I was able to share this with you between coughing and, and hacking. If you like what we do, please subscribe to us and we'll see you next time.